If you want to perform operations on decimal numbers by hand, you're going to do it essentially the same way you would if they were whole numbers, except you're going to have to worry about what's going on with the decimal. Let's look at adding two decimal numbers first. The first thing you need to make sure you do is make sure that the decimals line up. Okay, now if one of them has more digits to the right of the decimal than the other, then you use zero as a placeholder so that you can easily add column by column. Okay, here I have a zero plus six. So we're just going to add this as if there were no decimal there. Eight, five plus seven is twelve, carry the one, eleven, carry the one, and two. Okay, so you just add it like there's no decimal. Then afterwards, you have to determine where the decimal in your final answer will be, and it's just going to line up with the decimal in the two original numbers. Okay, now if you want to subtract two decimal numbers, you're going to do essentially the same as you would if there were no decimal points. So just subtract them as if there were no decimal point there. So I can't do 3 minus 5, so I need to make that a 13 by borrowing a 1 making that a 5. 13 minus 5 is 8. Can't do 5 minus 7, so once again I need to borrow a 1. This time it's 15. 15 minus 7 is 8. Can't do 4 minus 8, so need to borrow a 1, making that a 1. 14 minus 8 is 6. And 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, well you don't really need to put the 0 there. Okay. And now we just need to line up our decimal, pla our decimal points with the decimal in the final answer. Okay. So there's not really much to remember about how to deal with the decimal points when you add and subtract. It just needs to line up with the two original numbers. However, when you multiply and divide, you do have to remember some special rules about decimal placement. Okay, if you want to multiply two decimal numbers, you're going to start out by multiplying it as if there were no decimals in it at all. I'm going to use two different colors for each of the sections here. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the 5 by each of the digits in the top number. So 5 times 3 is 15. Carry my 1. 5 times 5 is 5. Plus 1 is 6. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Okay, let's do the next one in a different color. Oh, let's just Since I am skipping a to the next digit, I need to add a 0 here. Or you could just leave this blank and just start in this place here. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 5 is 15 carry the 1, and this is why I decided to use two different colors, because I'm not going to use this one anymore. And 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1, which is 7. Okay? Then I just want to add these digits up, and uh, it doesn't really matter what color I use, but I'm going to go ahead and go back to black. So that is 15, carry the 1, 9, 7, 8. Okay? The last thing you do is decide where you put your decimal. Okay. And the way you determine this is you add up how many places of decimals you have here. So we have one, two, three. So whatever these add to here, you're going to do down here. So we just do one, two, three. Okay, so we have one, two, three. So we do one, two, three, and put our decimal right here. The one operation that most people forget how to do with decimal numbers is division. Now to perform a division between two decimal numbers, what you want to do is make the divisor, which is the number that you are dividing by, a whole number by moving the decimal to the right some amount of units. In this example, I only need to move it one unit to right here. Now however many units you move the decimal in the divisor, you also need to do it to the dividend. Now your answer's decimal number will be 
I'm sorry, decimal point will be directly above that of the dividend. Okay? Now you just perform your division as if these were whole numbers. 12 will not go into 1. 12 will not go into 10. But, tw but 12 will go into 102 8 times. Because 12 times 8 is 96. Because I had to go to the 2 to get a number that 12 would go into, I need to put my 8 over the 2. So 102 minus 6 is 6. I'm sorry, 102 minus 96 is 6. Now, one way that you can check and make sure that you chose a large enough number here is by this number. Now, if this number is less than the divisor, then you know that you picked a number that was large enough to multiply by. Okay? So now I'm going to drop down the 7 because 12 will not go into 6, but 12 will go into 67. In fact, it'll go in 5 times, because 12 times 5 is 60. Now I just want to perform the subtraction. 7. Notice this number is less than 12, so we picked a large enough number. 12 won't go into 7, so I need to drop down my 2. 12 will go into 72, 6 times, and notice I'm putting the 6 over the 2 because we had to drop down the 2 here. Okay, so it's really important that you make sure that everything is lining up correctly. That way you know that your decimal will be in the correct place.